This video is for people who want to migrate their Mio Mini or Mio Mini Plus from the stock OS to the widely praised Onion OS. By clicking on this video, I assume you already know why you would want to do this, but if not, I will post a link in the description showing all the great features that Onion OS brings to these devices. We will use the Onion Windows Desktop Apps migration feature, which is the most straightforward and convenient method for accomplishing this. When finished, your device will have the newest version of Onion OS with all the ROMs, BIOS, and save games, if you have any, moved over from the stock OS. Okay, let's get on with it. So we first need to download the Onion OS desktop tool. It was created by one of the Onion OS developers named Schmertz, and his app is featured on the Onion OS website. However, because the current version sometimes has an issue with reading the stock SD card during the backup process, I recommend downloading the tool from Vlad Barotsov's GitHub page. He has fixed this backup issue, but the official tool has yet to be updated. Once it does get updated, I will change the link in the description to the official download page. So to download the tool, click the link in the description for Onion OS Desktop Tool. Then click the green code button in the middle right of the screen and select download zip. Unzip the file we just downloaded and then open the folder Onion Desktop Tools. Find and launch the option that says Onion Desktop Tools launcher.bat. This tool has many features, but today we're gonna stick with using the migrate feature. In another video, I will go over all the other features for anyone curious about that. So select Migrate Stock SD Card to a new SD card with Onion, then click OK. It will then ask you to insert the stock SD card that came with your Mio Mini. Once you have it in your SD card reader and connected, click OK. A box should appear showing the SD card. If you don't see it, you may need to wait a moment and hit refresh until it shows up, and then click OK. You will see some checkboxes here, and you may notice that the Saves box is not checked. As of right now, this tool does not copy over saves from the stock SD card. Now, if you have save files that you want to migrate, I will show you how to do that in just a moment. Before you click the backup button, ensure you have at least 60 gigabytes of space on the drive where the tool is located, as we will need that much space to migrate the ROMs over to the new SD card. You can always delete this once we're done here to get your 60 gigabytes back, and it's located in the backup folder. If you have space to spare, you can keep it there in case you need it in the future. Go ahead and click the backup button and type in a description for this backup. I'm just going to call it stock backup. Now here, this can take up to an hour, so you will need to give it some time. You will not see a pop up when it is done, but you will notice that the loading bar is gone and the backup button is no longer grayed out. This means that the backup is completed. Before we move on to the next step, if you have saved games on your stock SD card that you want to move over, let's get those now. To do this, leave the app where it is and open up a file explorer window. Navigate to the SD card and go to the RetroArch folder. Then open up the .RetroArch folder and copy the saves and states folders to your computer. So once you have your saves on your computer, you can go back to the app and close out of that backup window. You will then get a pop-up telling you to insert your SD card for Onion OS. So this will be the SD card that you want Onion OS installed on. It will need to at least be 64 gigabytes, and it is preferred to use a well-known name brand SD card like SanDisk or Samsung. I'll post some links in the description for a few that I recommend. Now, it is possible to keep the stock SD card in and install Onion OS on that. But most people, including myself, do not recommend that option, as the stock SD card will most likely fail or get corrupted at some point in the future, as it is a super cheap SD card. Even this desktop tool will tell you to avoid doing this if it notices that you're trying to use the stock SD card. If you don't have another SD card at the moment, you can use it for now and just as soon as possible, get a new SD card to replace the stock one. In this case, as long as you keep the backup folder, you will have at least a backup of that stock SD card. Once your SD card of choice is connected, click OK. Make sure it shows up here and click OK again. It will warn you twice that this SD card will be formatted and everything on it will be deleted. If you want to double check that nothing is on this card, now is your chance. Then click Yes and OK. A box will then pop up to have you choose which OS version to download. 
Stable is currently the newest and most up-to-date version, so we will select that. Even if this changes in the future, I recommend the stable version for most people. Then click on download. Once it's done downloading, this window should close on its own. In the next window, select the version on the left and click OK. Click yes on the warning to confirm the version we just selected. When this is complete, on the bottom right, it will say to insert this SD card into your Mio Mini to start installation. You can leave this window up while we do that. So go ahead and remove the SD card from the reader, place it into your device and power it on. The install process will start and it will take a few minutes. When it's done, you can press A to kind of go through a little walkthrough for Onion OS. But for this video, I will just hit B to skip it. It will then take us to the package manager to select what systems we want to install. We can skip this as the desktop tool will take care of this for us later. Just hit start twice to close out of it. Then your device will reboot and it will launch to Onion OS. So now that Onion OS is installed, we will need to move over all the ROMs and BIOS we backed up from the stock SD card. So power off the device by holding the power button for two seconds. Then remove and connect the SD card back to your computer. We should still be at this window here and you can close it now. Another window will pop up and here we will select the backup to restore. Unless you have done this before, you should only have one. Select it and the checkboxes should get automatically checked and then click on restore. Then select yes on the confirmation pop-up. This is another step that will take a long time, up to an hour. Something to note here. If you notice the bar is full, but nothing has updated on the right hand side, you may need to scroll down in the text field to see the backup completion message. Once you see that message, you can close out of the window and we are done with the migration process. There are still a few more things to do that are pretty simple and quick. First, select the Onion Configuration tab and select the Onion Emulators and App Manager, then click OK. Click OK again, and a large window should open up with a list of emulation cores. All we have to do here is click on the button in the top right hand corner that says Auto Install. It will show a long list of systems and just click Yes. This will detect the ROMs we put on the SD card and install the emulator cores we need. After a few seconds, all the orange rows should now be green, and then you can close out of this window. Now, if you don't have any saved games to bring over, that is everything you need to do. You can place the card back into your device, and you should now see all the consoles and games. Now, if you do have saved games to bring over, navigate to your SD card using the File Explorer, open the Saves folder, then Current Profile, now grab the saves and states folders we pulled over to your PC from the stock SD card and drag them here. Once those are moved over, eject your SD card, place it in your device, and there is one more setting we need to change for the saves to work. Go to apps, retroarch, settings, user interface, Enable Show Advanced Settings, and back out once, and go to Saving, and then disable the options Sort Saves into Folders by Core Name, and Sort Save States into Folders by Core Name. Then back out twice, go to Configuration File, and select Save Current Configuration. Then you can now back out to the main menu, select Quit RetroArch, and all of your saves should now be accessible. And that is it. You should now be all done migrating from stock OS to the Onion OS. I do want to note here that even though I just showed you how to bring over all the ROMs and BIOS from the stock OS, it's a good idea to eventually create and source your own ROMs and BIOS library. Many stock ROMs and BIOS are fine, but you may run into some duplicates, some in other languages, or some with bugs. So just be aware of that. If you are curious about what else you can do with this tool, I will soon release a video that covers all of its features in more depth. Lastly, a big thanks to Smirch for not only designing this tool, but also for his contributions to Onion OS. If you have any questions or ran into any issues, let me know in the comments and I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. Or you can join the FireX Text Discord from the link in the description and reach me there. 
If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more of this type of content. And as always, thank you for watching.